Welcome back to the Women of the Bible podcast. I am Erin Davis, joined with some dear friends of mine, and we are talking about Elizabeth. And I'm going to have you introduce yourselves Sweetheart. once again. Last time you told me your favorite cereal. Um, why didn't you tell me your favorite place to go on vacation this time? So, Erin Davis. I think I'm mountains, but then I feel beach sometimes. So I'm going to say, but I'm going to say mountains. Erin Davis, mountains. <laughs> I'm Asherita, and I would say mountains, too. If I would pick one place, right. though, it would be the Alps. Have oh. you been to the Alps? We went there on our honeymoon. Wow. Gorgeous. Fascinating. Did you it's sing gorgeous. The Hills Are Alive with I the did. sound of music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. Oh, that sounds lovely. My name is Alejandra, and I love the beach. You're yeah. from the beach, right? I'm from the beach. That was my backyard, so. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> My name is Jaquel, and I'm from Canada, so I also love the mountains. Okay, three mountains yeah. to one beach. But I love the beach. <laughs> Wait, cold good. mountains? Yes. Oh, see, I'm like warm oh, summer mountains. Okay. No, I love snow. But still mountains. Yeah, it counts. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> well, we are talking about Elizabeth, whose story is found in just one chapter in the Bible, Luke 1, and not even all of Luke 1 is dedicated to her. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't get a ton of real estate in scripture, but I think she has a lot to teach us about facing disappointment, which mm -hmm. is universal to every man, every woman, every child. And in this week of the Bible study, we looked at the fact that women tend to be fixers. Any confessions that you like to fix? Surely it's not just me. Anybody like to fix things? Yes. Not not things around the house, but kids. fix people, <laughs> kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what kinds of things are you chronically fixing with your kids? Don't hit your sister. Don't hit your sister. <laughs> that does seem useful. <laughs> we don't say that a lot at my house because it's all boys, but there's a lot of don't hit your brother. Don't pick your nose. <laughs> don't pick your nose. Like, yeah, That's a good thing to fix. Mm -hmm. I have to get everybody out the door with all the things. So did you get your backpack? <laughs> nope. Shoes, believe it or not, sometimes we get out of the house without shoes. Glasses, I'm just trying to fix it so that everybody can but get that out the door. Like I, I, I hope not. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I hope I your think, children have shoes. I think there them. is something that the Lord puts in women as I his image so. bearers that is good. We can take it too far, but I think, you know, there's good. a little bit of, we need to fix something. Listen, <laughs> girls, if I ever have spinach in my teeth and I'm with y'all, I want you to <laughs> fix that. That yeah, is the right that. friend yeah, move to do. That is the right thing to do. So I think there are times when fixing things are good. But uh, as we're looking at Elizabeth this week, I'm really struck by the fact that sometimes, or maybe always, we need to get out of the way and let God do the fixing in other people's lives. So uh, we're looking at Elizabeth's story this week and her husband, Zechariah, has this experience with an angel. And what happens to Zechariah? You guys remember the story? This is his voice. He's mute. mute. <laughs> this is his voice. He's struck mute. So the angel Gabriel comes to Zechariah tells Zechariah that his prayers have been answered and they're going to conceive a child. So this is how we know that Zechariah and Elizabeth had been praying for the Lord because it mm -hmm. says in the text that his prayers have been answered. And Zechariah just has a moment, a moment of doubt, a moment of hesitation, and he is struck mute. I would want to fix that, wouldn't you? Oh, if yes. husband comes home... <laughs> From I'll his start time doubting in the something's temple. happening. I'll be sure. like, what in the world? <laughs> I mean, you were in the temple where you everything's the supposed temple. to be nice and holy. And how come you're coming home and you're not saying and a you word? And you can't talk. I would probably assume my husband, Jason, was faking it. Yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the car once and I said the question every man hates. What are you thinking? Yeah. Oh, and he Lord. was awake as he could be. And then I said, what are you thinking? And he slumped against the window and pretend he was asleep. Yeah. And I was like, mm-mm. Yeah, so exactly. I <laughs> might first assume that he was faking it. And then I would try to fix it. Like, yeah. mm. let's go to the doctor. Yeah. My friend has tried this kind of tea for her yeah. voice. Let me. Elizabeth couldn't Google, yeah. but I would have been <laughs> yeah. Googling away. Or I'll put it on me. Sure. I will be like, he just doesn't want to talk to me. Sure. You know, I am such a pain sometimes. Sure. He doesn't want to tell me what he thinks. Sure. Or, you know, and we could do that very Yeah, we could. Too. But that's not what Elizabeth does. It's mm -hmm. not what we infer from the text. But there are some powerful words that we read about in this week of study. They are spoken by the angel Gabriel to Zechariah in the temple. And Asherita, would you read them to us? They're found in Luke 1.19. The angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and I have been sent to you to speak and bring good news. 
Wow. Any translation there? The Gabriel saying, I'm, I'm Gabriel and I stand in the presence of mm. God. And the inference there is you don't, Zechariah. Like yeah. I am the angel Gabriel mm. and I have something to say. Um, and that he's really speaking to the sovereignty of God. Mm. Um, my husband this past year lost his grandpa who is this been this godly patriarch of our family. And my husband's grief is deep and I want to fix it. I want to fix it because I love my husband so much and it's hard to watch. And I want to fix it because it's hard. Um, and I felt the conviction that I want to be the friends Job didn't have, mm -hmm. that I want to be the friend to Jason that just sits in the grief, however long we have to sit in the grief. And now we're coming on almost a year and I'm like, well, how long does this last, yeah. this grief mm -hmm. thing? But um, I'm naturally a fixer. And certainly when it comes to Jason, I'm naturally a fixer. But what has helped me be that kind of silent friend is that God is sovereign. And that God is sovereign over Jason's grief. And that God is sovereign over the process of however long it takes. And um, Gabriel's words, uh, I think, are an encouragement to me as I think about that situation. And however long it will go on and however long it'll hurt. Um, that God is sovereign even in that situation. Is any of you currently in a situation where there's a desire to fix it and God is sovereignly fixing it instead? Would you say it tests our faith? Mm -hmm. There is a test for our faith when someone else is going through something. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily your disappointment anymore. It's their disappointment. So in this process of grief after um, losing our, my father three months ago, uh, being there for my mother and, and for my brother, um, and having myself to go back to scripture to find comfort for them mm. um, has tested my faith too. Sure. So sometimes we see someone else going through this appointment and we go to, how can I fix it? Sure. Um, I can go back to Eve. I mean, when the serpent came to her and told her that, you know, they were going to know as much as God or they were going to be wiser, maybe she thought, you know, my husband was given the task of naming all the animals. <laughs> so maybe if we get a little bit of wisdom out of this fruit, that sure. could go quicker. Sure. I don't know. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. some way of, of helping sure. somehow could be, and, and we can get ourselves in deep trouble if we don't find the right help. I mean, we see that with Sarah and Abraham, right? Mm -hmm. God yeah. promised yeah. an heir to Abraham and Sarah wants to go about and fix it mm -hmm. because it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she endured the disappointment of her infertility for a season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, we, as we talked about in session one, disappointment, the weight of that can get heavier. Mm -hmm. And she somehow, over time, convinced herself, well, God made this promise. Maybe I better help him mm -hmm. along. And I think there's a temptation mm -hmm. there. Could it be in Elizabeth, um, the way of her seeing her husband, in this case, go through the struggle? I mean... I'm not having children. Now he has no voice. Sure. What are we going to do? Sure. Um, she went to God in the sense of being still. Mm -hmm. You know, how much are we actually being still and mm -hmm. quieting our hearts and ourselves when, when we see someone else going through this appointment and, and bringing it to the Lord and just saying, you know, how, how can we do this together? Yeah, I think in some ways watching someone you love face a season of disappointment I don't know that I'd call it harder, but it's a different brand of hard mm -hmm. because you love that person and you want to give them relief. Mm -hmm. You want the season of disappointment to be over. You don't have any control. And that, we don't know what motivated Sarah. We don't know what motivated Elizabeth. We'd have to be reading into it. Um, but I know what motivates me is I, I sometimes have the right desire that I want the people I love to have relief. And I sometimes have the wrong desire that in that your pain is inconveniencing me mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. And so I would really like this season to be over. Yeah. And or you so, might have the right solution. Too. Sure. Yeah. You know. It's very clear to me what you should do right <laughs> yeah. now. Right? <laughs> and so I think, um, we know what to say to each other. If we, if we know the Lord and read his word and, and, and we're in women's Bible studies like this, we would know what to say to each other for, our own disappointment. Like, yes, I'm disappointed, but God is good and God is sovereign. But when someone we love is struggling, I'm not sure we always know 
how to say or when to say it or what to say or when to be quiet and when to give mm. wisdom and those kinds of things. Most people don't and don't know. I don't think we know. Sure. Um, from 2 Corinthians 1.15, we get that we go through struggles and, and this really has caught my attention many times. So we can comfort mm -hmm. others. And comforting others sometimes means listening. Sometimes means bringing food to their home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes means a hug. And sometimes means wise words. But that comfort comes from what you receive from Christ already mm -hmm. and asking him as you pray for this person sometimes, you know, what, how can I, what can I do? We get in trouble when we want to fix it sure. in our own methods and in our logical way. Sure. You know, you're crying, I can pat you and, hey, let's get going. Sure. Mm -hmm. But are we asking the Lord, you know, how can I help my husband go through this? Or how can I help my mom or my brother or my child go sure. through this? And, and he will get us through it, I'm sure. I think it also comes down to a trust mm -hmm. issue too. Because, I, I mean, in our own lives, we experience disappointment and we might say, okay, God, where are you? But when someone else experiences disappointment, mm -hmm. can I trust that God is going to meet them mm -hmm. in their place of need? Can I trust that he will be enough for them? Or do I want to kind of come alongside and be like, oh, let me help you along a little bit. Sure. Um, it, what I found in my experience is when I jump in too soon in manipulative ways, even if they're well intended, mm -hmm. I rob my loved one of the comfort that God himself can give. Sure. That's right. I cannot substitute for them um, the comfort. You know, Paul yeah. says we comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have been comforted yeah. by God. That word comfort there mm -hmm. so many times, it's a, a personal thing that only our loved one can experience. Yeah, I think disappointment, whether our own or those we love, can really reveal what our faith is made mm -hmm. of because we, we face disappointment, we know God's going to come through, but if someone we love is facing disappointment and we just can't wait it out, we worry that God won't come through for them in the way he's come through for us, or we feel like the timeline is too long, that's really revealing something about our faith. And you mentioned one response um, to others' disappointment is prayer. And we don't know, we, we would have to be saying something that isn't in the text that Elizabeth prayed for Zechariah, but we do know that she is a faithful woman of God. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we could make some assumptions there. We know that she'd been praying for a child. The text does say that. And so uh, I wonder if any of you have had somebody that prayed for you in a season of disappointment and what a difference that made. Because that's an alternate, it seems like, it is a passive response. Mm -hmm. Prayer yeah. seems like a passive response, right? Yeah. But it's really um, something really profound we can do. Jaquel, I know you have praying parents. I do. And you're a young adult. I so am. there's probably some <laughs> disappointments that come with mm -hmm. that. And, and, and maybe this is true or not true. I don't know your parents well, but have they prayed you through seasons of disappointment? They have indeed. So my parents, um, whether I've known it or haven't known it, I, I know for sure that they have been praying for me throughout my entire life. And I actually remember when I first realized how much they pray for me um, behind closed doors that I never see. And there were a lot of times during disappointments that I didn't know they were praying for me. You know, I kind of assumed it, but I never actually realized it until... I came through the season or something changed and, you know, my parents specifically expressed that their prayers were answered. And I think there is something, um, we assume that prayer so often is like the, the easiest thing we can do. Sure. Oh, well, if we can't actually fix it, you know, if we can't give money or do the practical solution, then I guess we'll just pray. And, you know, that's the best we can do when really that should be our very first response, the first thing we should want to do in either our own season of disappointment or when we look at someone else's life, because as you said, like we do not have the power to fix it. We don't. And so we should run to the one who does have the power to fix and it. And that is a comfort to me in seasons of loss and disappointment and suffering for someone to say they're praying for me at some at points has been the absolute lifeline. Mm -hmm. I thought, I don't have what it takes to pray for me right now. Yeah. This is hard. Yeah. But someone is praying for me. And it's been more helpful than that person trying to explain it away or give me some sense of false hope or promise that the next day is going to be better when maybe it is okay. and maybe it isn't. Mm -hmm. um, but to, to pray for me, I've learned 
to pray with people as often as possible. Man, mm-hmm. I pray into voicemails all the time. I just yeah. did this yesterday. A good friend of mine is going through something really hard, and I knew I was flying to be here and record this podcast, and I couldn't be with her. And I just called and cried into her voicemail and said, I'm going to pray the Lord will hear it in real time. You'll hear it when you hear it. Um, but I love you and I'm praying for you rather than me telling her it was going to be okay because yeah. right now it looks like it's not going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it can be really, really comforting to people who are facing disappointment yes. to pray for them, pray with them. Pray with them. Yeah. I love yeah. that you said that because some of the greatest comforts the Lord has given me in disappointment has come through women praying mm. over me. Mm. And just stopping and saying, hey, can I pray for you yeah. right now? Like, it's okay to say, I'll pray for you. I've done that before. I've also forgotten to mm. pray. And so when, when someone pauses for me to pray or when I do that for someone, I think that's one of the ways that the body of Christ comes together mm. and, um, and works to speak the power of God's word. I love praying scripture mm-hmm. to say, this is true of who God is. This is true of who you are. Mm-hmm. This is true of this situation. And I am reminding us of this and I am reminding God of his promises. Yep. There's something powerful there. Yeah. I mean, to the woman listening to this podcast, she's been listening to us talk and she already can think of who that is in their life. That's mm-hmm. facing struggle. And, okay, we don't want to fix it. What do we do? And she could right now say, I was listening to this podcast and they reminded me that I could pray with you. Can I pray with you right now? Um, Text them a prayer, drive to them and put your hands on their shoulders and pray with them. Mm. That's a right and good response to somebody who's in a season of disappointment that they're going to respond to. Yeah. Yeah. Because also sometimes when we are in those seasons, we talked about this before. We don't know what to pray. Right. And we don't, we don't have the language. We don't have the words. We don't have the feelings to even come to God and to have someone else either pray for us from afar or to actually pray with us mm-hmm. can give us the language or the comfort that we can't get on our own. And to speak truth to us. I mentioned in the first episode that I've left my position at my church recently and it hurts my heart. And my pastor said to me in the middle of that, what can I do for you? And I said, I need you to speak truth to me because I can't quite see it for myself. And so he'll send me a passage. He'll call and speak a passage into my voicemail. We'll speak truth to each other. And I think even this this passage that we read in Elizabeth's story where Gabriel says here in verse 19, I'm Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to you. Speaking to, you know, the authority, the sovereignty of God, uh, I think those, a a text message sent in due season could be such a comfort, right? Mm. And if you don't know what to say, I think uh, passages about the sovereignty and goodness of God are always good Mm -hmm. and always right and always an encouragement, no matter what the disappointment somebody else Mm -hmm. is facing might be. And is there reaching out? I think as women, sometimes we don't reach out enough to one another knowingly what season that person is going sure. through. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to be a little more um, aware of our sisters in our churches, in our groups, um, in their supermarkets sometimes sure. um, of, of, you know, just reaching out and coming alongside and sometimes not even asking. You know, you see a mom struggling with a baby mm-hmm. and you can just say, hey, can I hold him for a minute? You don't have to ask her her story, what she's going through. Sure. Just grab that baby and you give her five minutes of rest. You don't have to walk her through the Romans road. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as long as she says yes, sure. you know, take that baby, sure. carry him and just give her some comfort. Or say... Um, you're doing a great job. You know, even that, or you have such a beautiful family or yes. anything, because there are hard seasons that you just don't want to say what you're going through. Sure. You just want someone to see the picture and just come and say, hey, I'm here. Mm-hmm. So it speaks a lot about of our humility, sure. you know, of saying, hey, I've been there. And even if I haven't been there, I know what that it could be like. Sure. So I'm going to come alongside with you. I'm going to be here for you. Um, and, and it unites us, like you were saying, as the body mm-hmm. uh, before God and saying, you know, we are together here yeah. asking you for mercy. Yep. Um, and that is so important in our homes mm-hmm. because that is the gospel. Yep. Right. When our husbands are going through something difficult and we just block them or give mm-hmm. them the cold look and the cold war in the house mm-hmm. or our children yep. might be struggling with things, even as little as a two-year-old. Sure. I have one of those, <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and you just want to discipline them and you just want to let them know who the boss is, sure. you know, um, coming alongside of them and saying, you know what, buddy, this is, 
you're going to be okay mm-hmm. and we're going to get through this and the Lord is here and he's with us. Mm. And I think as we speak those things to someone else, we're really speaking to ourselves sure. and to the forces of hell that might be around sure. trying to destroy that person sure. and destroy us. And we're saying, no, we're standing on the rock. We're standing on Jesus yep. and we're doing it together. Yep. And this person is not alone in this struggle. Um, that happens a lot in the True Woman conferences. Sometimes, mm. you know, after translating, I go around and I just pray for women. And, and I believe God gives you the discernment right there and then without sure. even knowing this sure. person to speak into their lives because it's the Holy Spirit through you. Sure. So I think if we could be a little more open our eyes, Lord, to see people around us that might be going through struggles or disappointments mm-hmm. and how we can come along and say, hey, you're not alone. I'm, I'm going to carry you through this process with prayer and, and, and extending next to you through it. Does this ever happen to you? A name just drops into your head or yeah. heart. <laughs> and weeks or months or years later, you realize that at that moment, that person was facing an intense battle of mm-hmm. some kind. You know something you had no way of knowing. My friend Tippy describes wisdom as that way, yeah. uh, knowing something you have no other way of knowing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and you find out that that friend that the Lord or person in my church, or maybe stranger, Mm -hmm. that the Lord dropped into my heart was facing a difficult season, and the Lord brought them to my mind so that I could comfort them with what I've been comforted. I've learned to just respond. Even if it doesn't make me sense, I just respond to that person because I assume that the Lord has something for me to say. God can use any of us. Sometimes we think it has to be the people on the stage Mm -hmm. or the pastor or whoever has some kind of title. We are the body. I'm much more (laughs) often comforted by the person who knows yeah. me as me, yeah. walks through my real life with me, <laughs> and is brave enough to mm. speak words of encouragement yes. to me. Yeah. Jaquel, what were you going to say? I think when it comes to seeing other people go through disappointments, we really have one of two reactions. Either we want to fix them or we want to withdraw. Yeah. And, and that's something that's I common. get so much because we're afraid of saying the wrong thing, of making things messier. Sure. Um, but it is a sinful response it to is. say, sure. look, I am going to be... This is too be, messy. You I'm, let me know when it's exactly, cleaned up. Exactly. Sure. I'm going to receive wounds from the shrapnel of your pain sure. when we are called as the body of Christ yeah. to get down and dirty and, and love our brothers and sisters. For in, the long haul. Exactly. You know, who walked with Elizabeth through infertility, hopefully at year one, yeah. at year two? At year three. Oh, yeah. How many were left waiting with Elizabeth in hope at, mm. I don't know, decades yeah. in? You know, when all natural hope of a child was gone, did Elizabeth have people speaking truth into her life? Mm. I sure hope so, but yeah. we don't know. It's true you say it's sinful mm. because sometimes we downplay it and we say, well, you know, we don't even speak the same language. Why should I even try, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, giving this person a hug? Or, you know, we're not from the same neighborhood, so I don't even know how to get to her. I don't have her number. Or, you know, there, there's a lot of studies that, you know, YouTubers have done on, you know, someone just begging on the side of the road and how many people pass by and, and don't help them or mm-hmm. don't do anything about sure. it. And, and that's just one example of sometimes how we act even within the church. Sure. I don't have her number. She's older than me. Uh, she's an older woman. I mean, yeah. Or younger. <laughs> or a younger woman. You sure. Know? Mm-hmm. How can I relate to her? Sure. Um, but we are called to be to be that hand for one to another, to help each other out mm-hmm. and to seek doing it. Yep. What we see in Elizabeth is that Elizabeth had a lifetime of yeses. I mean, she she was from this ministry family. She could have walked away from that at any point. Um, she was married to a man in ministry. She could have walked away from that. Mm-hmm. She could have walked away from the marriage. You know, yeah. there was no way for her to know if she was the problem or, or he, he was, was the problem. problem. And she could have tried to figure that out On in another own. way, right? <laughs> yeah. Or in this situation where he's been struck mute, um, she could have assumed that that was due to his sin. I mean, yeah. he'd been in the yeah. temple. Like maybe and, he doesn't even have a job anymore. Right, and she could have speak. felt the need to walk away, but we just see her continuing to say yes. And you fast forward in her story. She does have John. Spoiler alert, she gets pregnant. <laughs> um, and she does have John. And let's be honest, John's weird. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, and she, this long for a child, we don't know how long she got to parent God him. God knew she only needed one. She only that needed kind. one. <laughs> but we hard. see this legacy of yes in Elizabeth, despite also a, just a lifetime of disappointment. Mm-hmm. 
And I wonder as we're thinking about comforting others in their disappointment, I bet each of us have somebody with a legacy of yes, who's given us a vision for what it means to face disappointment with grace, Mm -hmm. um, even over the long haul. And I wonder if any of you would share with us who that person with a legacy of yes is in your own lives. I'll go first because I I have someone right away and I love to brag on her and it's my mom. Mm. Um, And something that is so powerful in my mom's life is that I have seen her walk with me Mm. through disappointments, but I have seen even more um, just her walk through the disappointments that she's faced. And I have seen her, you know, wrestle with God, not just um, try to put on a facade for me that, you know what, I don't have any questions. I'm not disappointment, disappointed. Um, I saw her be sad. Mm. I, I saw her pray. Um, and I don't think I ever heard her ask God why, but I heard her express to God that she was disappointed. Sure. Um, like as a kid and a teenager, I saw that. Um, I saw her fighting to read God's word when she didn't feel like mm. it. And I knew she didn't feel like it. And she still showed us, um, did it even in, in public spaces in our home so that me and my brother saw her doing that. Um, I saw her going to church when she told me when, when I knew that she didn't feel like it. Um, not because she was trying to follow some rules, but because she was fighting for faith and she was fighting for joy in the midst of her disappointments. And she modeled that for me and my brother in a way that you know, I, I constantly look back on and I know I am going to face so many more disappointments in life ahead. Sure. And I have that legacy that I can look to and that I can, I can go to her uh, as much as she has pointed me to Jesus. I love that. As a, as a mama of boys, I feel like Elizabeth gets to claim yeah. some of John's success yeah. for the kingdom, right? <laughs> and, um, you know, to the point of death, he followed yeah. Christ faithfully. And your mom gets to claim some yeah. of your faithfulness to the mm-hmm. Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that you said that you watched her wrestle because sometimes as mamas, right, we don't know. Is yeah. it okay to cry? Yeah. My children are terrified of me crying. They just back <laughs> away slowly and start yeah. throwing chocolate in my general direction. Like, <laughs> mommy is sad. Get out of the situation. Yes. Um, but you give me this idea that that they could watch me face disappointment mm-hmm. and that it could it could build legacy of faith in them. I love that. I hope my children say that about me someday. Jaquel, that's beautiful. Anybody else know who your person is that has just a legacy of yes that you've been able to watch? Well, mine would be my mom too. Mm. Um, Just an amazing testimony of trusting Jesus from a young age and going through dangerous situations and continuing to place her trust in Jesus, even when she couldn't see a way out. Um, Just continual surrender. And imperfectly mm. like um but continuing to to cry before the lord and to place everything before him mm. um and as a young adult i had the privilege of being the shoulder for her to cry on and to be the one to speak truth back into her like mm. she had sowed she had sown that truth into me mm. she had scattered the seed in my heart of god's word and i i had the joy of bringing it back and saying no God is our refuge Mm. and strength. He's a mighty tower for us. We run to him and find rescue. Great job, all the mamas with a legacy of yes, Mm. right? Do you know who your person is? My mom, uh, two of my two grandmas, Mm. definitely. Laura, one of my mentors. And I I could have a good handful of women in my life that I just look up to them and think, wow, my friend, Joanna has eight children. That alone to me, sure. it's, it's like, she take my hat hero. off. Yes. <laughs> You're amazing. Um, but what I get from this too is if you don't have that. Sure. You know, many of the women that are listening do not have that yep. mom mm-hmm. or, or just came to Jesus. Sure. And I think you need to find one. Absolutely. And the first way that you find one, it's praying. Sure. Asking God, can you send that woman sure. to my life? Um, that could be that, that help, you know, and, and make yourself available Mm -hmm. for her because that's a problem with our generation too. You know, we can YouTube or Google anything. So why even find someone else? We don't have to have grandma's Mm. recipe for a pie crust. Exactly. (laughs) We can just figure it out ourselves and try it and do it. Um, but I, I could say, you know, we, the importance of it, like the way you guys speak about your moms yeah, and, and I could think of other women and the way we think, why well, it would be so nice if our children would, 
sometimes you might feel, you know, I didn't have that mom sure. and I have the children, but I don't have that example in my life. Yep. Um, there are there, you know, you have to go and find them. I would piggyback on that and say, yes, find that woman. Yeah. And then if you're the younger woman, take the initiative. Say, yeah, hey, can I, can exactly. we go to coffee sometime? Yeah. There's yeah, tons yeah. of evidence that younger women mm -hmm want to be mentored yeah. and that older women want to mentor, yeah. but, but they don't meet. But they we don't meet. Connect. And yeah. so it takes somebody to step up and say, well, I yeah. would love to spend time with you. I admire your life. And yeah. I think it's because mentoring is like this huge, oh, yes. like, what am I supposed to do as a mentor? <laughs> sure. But if you say, hey, can we have coffee sometime? Yeah. I want to be hey, your can, friend. Can we yeah. just chat about life? Sure. I've got six loads of laundry. Would you mind coming and sure. helping me fold laundry? <laughs> yeah. like, it, it's doing life together. Yep. That's and and you don't have to be alone. You know, mm -hmm. you, you mm -hmm. could find that lady and stop going for, well, if she likes this and I like that, then we're a good match. Sure. Just yeah. pray and ask the Lord to, hey, you know, I'm praying about this person and then talk to them and don't overwhelm them because, sure. you know, that can go. <laughs> we <laughs> want, first coffee date, you want to, don't want to maybe download yeah, it all. But or, you sure. know, or take it as your nanny or sure. as your sitter all the time. Sure. <laughs> Give the lady a break. She already <laughs> raised some kids, so, sure. you know. But use her for her wisdom. Talk yeah. to her about, you know, what do you think of this? Sure. How would you handle that? And, and, and I'm sure it will be easier. So if you're there and you don't have that person in your family um, or closer to you, you know, it's good to start praying about finding that and asking the Lord to send that person to you and reaching out yes. to the few that you might know, even if they're in another city sure. or another country, sure. just phone them up and say, you know, we can Skype once in a month. WhatsApp. Once a month. We can WhatsApp. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Jaquel, you mentioned messy. Yeah. I don't think we always think of messy women as great mentors, mm -hmm. but they are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they can be because they are in the mess yeah. or they've been through the mess. They've mm -hmm. faced the disappointment. They've certainly learned some lessons along the way. The Lord's been faithful to them in it. And even if they're still in the midst of it, um, I think that woman that you look at her and go, man, she's walking through something hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I at least see her doing it with grace. Yeah. Yeah. I at least see her doing it with faithfulness. And I want to know how. And one conversation can be a lot. And a mm -hmm. many, many conversations can teach us so much. I think too, for us to be aware, you know, whatever season of life we're in, to look for that woman ahead of us, mm -hmm. but to also look behind us yeah. sure. and say, who's That's coming good. up? Who is, sure. is there a high schooler who's struggling because her parents' marriage is falling apart? Sure. Is there a college student who's far from home that I can invite her to come in the messiness of my kitchen yeah. mm -hmm. and say, let's bake cookies together. That's what Elizabeth would together. marry Absolutely. Way. You know, there was that kind of relationship. Exactly. Yep. You are always further ahead of someone. There is always someone that you can pour into yep. for the sake of the gospel. Absolutely.